Welcome back ladies, welcome back dear patrons, welcome back gentlemen and gentlemen. <laughs> it was a joke because it's Friday afternoon. Today is the day where I show you a very long sleeve. It's really long, so if you have a long bow to pack, it's fine too. It's the most expensive bow I ever bought and even I ever bought from my patrons. I only unpacked it once to take a photo, but I never strung it or anything else yet. It's the Tatar by Lukas Novotny. Look at this. What a beautiful bow. And what you get with it, important, especially for me, Care guide for your Saluki bow. Thank you for purchasing. I hope you give you many years of great service. After you unpack the bow, do not immediately string it. So the bow is here since a good week, so it has a temperature. So that you don't have you not done put it in from the hot car into the cold environment or something. So let it first settle with the temperature, acclimate first before stringing. And for the actual stringing instruction, refer to Saluki Bow Co website. The frequently asked question section, however, due to the high reflex in the limbs of some of my bows, especially in the line of the hybrid models, be very careful using step through method of stringing, particularly if you're not familiar. It's advisable to use two person, we know that, and for the hybrid bows and hornbows, do not use a method in place of stringer. So you don't use stringer, use two people or a step through if you know it. So this is what came with the bow. And let's start first with the negative things. First of all, and we have them out of the way. The price of this bow, I paid 1,300 US dollars for the bow, 95 dollars for the shipping, and another, I think, around 300 dollars for customs. If you don't have special agreements with anyone, then you have to pay that. And what you get then is a bow, a sleeve, most hopefully a string. No, I feel it. And this piece of advice. So I look, it's back there. I personally think for this price, I could ask for a little more. I think so, it's, it's, but it's me. Because, oh, wait a second, I get the string out for you. I hope. So the sleeve is very long, most probably so it fits all his bows. But it's kind of like, so now we have the string. String looks good. And there you see again, this is down. I don't know what that means, C, T, H, Y. Down, so this is the, the bottom part and this is the top part of the string, that's fine. The bow is fine, so documentation wise, you get nothing out of this, only string it right and make sure that it acclimates properly. When I see, as example, Lukas Navalny, you get a warranty card. We have see the poundage and the Maxtro. Grosa, you get this card, warranty card with the poundage and the Maxtro. And I assume now, because I don't get any information, there is written somewhere. I read it somewhere, but I don't know where I read it. There, I read it. It's very small written there. Yeah. Let me read it for you. It's a tartar. 54 inches, a serial number has 46 pounds at 28. I wrote this down already, it has 51 pounds at 30 inches. So I guess then the max draw is 30 inches. And that's all I have on information. The other thing, the packaging was very safe and very solid, but I will show you a photo. It's like my whole room was full of plastic garbage. So, and when you see it's a premium product, or when you see, like, example, when you get a bow from Lukas Navalny with this cut out in an in, inch styrofoam, you open it, you know, you feel like an Apple product for the price. It shows this premium quality here. The sleeve got stuck between plastic bags, which are filled with plastic garbage. I mean, I like this idea of recycle and everything is fine, but I don't know, 1,300 bucks, I would have thought the packaging already would be nicer, but it's not the packaging. 
and it's not all about this, it's about the bow. And when you see this one, you can tell already directly, look at this cutouts here in the, in the Kassan. This bow means performance. And this handle, I never had a handle like this in my hand, feels just awesome. It's relatively narrow, relatively deep, has a stitching on front, and you see this shape here, it's just brilliant and it's kind of like almost like a small arrow rest and you can see that you shot the bow in there already scratches on it so most probably he, he really tests all his bows and there's a saluki name on it and what i like i'm not a paisley fan but look at this paisley patterns and i think this is some kind of maybe it's silk or something and then it would be even add another layer of protection on the back so Lucas really knows Lucas really knows what he's doing. You have arrow passes on both sides out of some very rough material. It's a beautiful bow. But back to what we have and what we got. So you get the documentation. It's from Saluk, it's a Crimean Tatar hybrid. It's a Tartar bow, laminated. Uh, they are unstrung 54 to 56 inches. This one is a 54 inch version. We don't know the brace height. Uh, I told you the poundage. You can have this bow from 35 to 70 pounds. Max draw, I assume, now is 30 inches. And there's no recommendation of arrow weight. What means hybrid in this regard? It's a faithful copy of the looks and feel and performance of my horn bows, but made with modern materials, wood, fiberglass, composite. So it's a simple laminated price I told you and then of course you can have several thousand options but you simply check on his website if you want and if you're willing to spend this money I like the string bridges they are very wide so the string will always catch up inside here that's nice and this thing is simply very fragile for a 50 pounder holy moly I assume this will be a really really good performer question is is it worth it the price or the price difference to a good Grosser bow or Navalny bow? That's the question we will find out now. Let's check now. I do my measurements like I always do, as you know it. The sandal is really nice. It's red on the back, but I didn't give him any instructions. I only told him I need a bow. 56 inches from knock to knock. So actually it's a 56 incher. And then only does 30 inches, but better 30 inches safe than, you know, we had this in the last video. What else? Oh, yeah, of course, arrow pass. I forgot now. I got to carry the carried away. So we have here arrow pass of 23 millimeters, which is fine. It's not even an inch, but this bow is all over very subtle, very, very, this is really, this, this is a formula one. This is, so. We have a knocking point on it, out of a thread. I like this, so nothing metal. I leave now this flap on for my patron who will get this bow, okay? So, now we need to string the bow. I do the opposite string method as you know it. Let's see how easy this goes. So I don't twist the bow or anything. And I assume this bow will have from the beginning, oh yeah, oh Madonna. Jesus Christ. Then you feel that this is a performer. Ooh, there is tension directly from the, from the beginning. So this is, oh look, as somebody last time complained that I plucked the string and then the vibration, you have vibration, yes you have. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there's a little vibration, but I guess it goes away. And we use this as a string, puffy, muffy, thingy, boom. Yeah, you know what I mean. Look at this awesome bow. I mean, it's a beautiful bow. It's not, nothing against this. So from the handle to here, we have seven inches roughly. Brace height. But I don't know what the brace height should be, but I guess it should be like this. Otherwise, it would be different, I guess. I mean, he really knows what he's doing. Kilogram sounds good. It's not heavy. Maybe a little heavy as the normal ones. Yeah, 380. But still fine. 
380 grams for a 51 pound 30 inch draw monster. I will see that I get proper arrows with it, but as I said there is no recommendation of arrow weight. So of course if you use 10 grain, you need roughly 500 uh, grain arrows. If you want to go to 8 grain, you need 400 grain arrows. And if you want to go down to 7, you need 360 grain arrows. I see what I have then. But I'm first I shoot kind of like maybe 500 and we see what the bow is doing. Nice. Here and here. It's stiff. So it's built for performance. I heard some say that they are a bit too much built for performance and they don't. Oh, Madonna. From the beginning. <laughs> it's from here. Oh, Madoffi. Yeah, but there is not more going than that. Oh, but there is tension in this bow. Holy moly. So for horse archers. <laughs> I didn't bring the arrows now. So I need to see which arrows I get. And then we shoot this monster. Holy cow. So, one of your patrons. Ho, ho. First ones are the Taurus arrows with 500 grain. So we are roughly at 10 grain per pound. They are of course 32 inches. So we need to see how long we draw them. Knocking point is nice that there's a knocking point set on it. God, this boat draws nice. Oh, to the left. Narrow arrow pass, so again. Ah, to the left and a bit high. So this one, I need a while until I get the feeling for it. Oh, nice. They are 450, they are 31 inches, 450 grain. Let's see what they do. Fletching is too long for these ones. Oh, nice. Kicks the arrows nice away. The draw is really nice. Nice. Oh, the fletching is not existing anymore. Okay. Ow. And they are 425, I think. So these are the lightweight, most lightweight ones I have. I don't go any further down. Because I don't. I mean, could shoot range arrows with 300 grain. Maybe. Nice. Oh, you hear that? Oh, this one kicks the arrows in. A bit to the left again. Hmm. Yeah, a few shots. You need to. It can hurt a bit. It's very narrow here, so you really need to find the proper place here that it settles properly, and you need to control your bow properly. Otherwise, this is not going to work. But wow, group is not very good. But I show you because I'm a good boy. Nice bow. Ooh. Look, my group was a little undecent. I can do better, I know. I mean, look, look at this pretty bow here. Ooh. So 500 grain again on 12 meters. Ah, still to the left. Oh, now I lost my signature thingy for the up and down of the string. Now look at this still to the left. Yeah, you can compensate for it. 450 grain, 400 spine. Oh, this one don't fly that nice. Yeah, probably because of the fletching. And you really requires a firm grip and a solid grip. So don't kill the bow with your grip, but you need to hold the bow. Ah, you look a little, a little torque. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Are we talking? Let's do Katra with the lightweight ones. Huh? Ooh, said it and missed the target. Let's do that again. Oh, Jesus Christ. So one more time. Oh, a fantastic shooter. The draw is very nice. So in the beginning, it's a little hard. 
and then here it gets a little better and then back there it gets stiff again but from the beginning from here on kind of like 20 meters stay oh, it's, come on these are the heavy ones these are the lightweight ones so we start again with the 500 grain i hope you see me i hope so Let's try torque. Nah, still to the left. 450, 400 spine. But this bow is good for torque. Very good. Oy, 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 oy. Bad release. So here we really... It's nothing for a beginner. Not even for me. But one of my patrons will be happy, I guess, with this premium bow. Focus! Yeah. It does what you want, it takes a while. Oh, said you didn't miss the target again, seriously. So, this bow is demanding. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know how to string a bow, you need to know how to shoot it. Everything needs to be there, the grip needs to be always the same. You need to have a crisp release, you have proper back tension, otherwise this bow is fooling you. But it's a nice bow. So, 30 meters directly. What a great bow. Huh? So handle, you need to get used to it. and wobbly, uh, but it's my bad release. Now look at this. That was a bad shot, I felt it. 450 grain. Now, all right. So you need to work with your spine. Let you get what works for you, low and right. Overcompensating and the lightweight ones. We oui. they are so lightweight, Jesus. Powerful bow. But once you get the hang of it, no problem. Oh, I still take some time. Five hundred oops, five hundred grain, fifty one pounds means 10 grain per pound. 182. 149, wrong. 180. And the lightweight, 425 ish. Seventy-five bad shot from me. So, two hundred foot per second is possible. Five hundred, uh, four hundred twenty-five grain, still a little heavy, I guess. So you could go to four hundred grain. Then you had eight grain, surely still on the safe side. With the lighter ones, I felt it a little in the hand, but it's very minor.
the technology now today not working. So that you see the curves, I hold the bow upright. Glass is kind of 30 inches. It's a fun shooter, draws nice, shoots nice. Is very demanding sometimes. And sometimes this just works like a charm. So it's really, you need to spend time with this bow. Kicks a little, vibrates a little, but nothing serious. And you don't like what it's doing, and then you shoot a nice group again. <laughs> Nice, so you want to do a bit torque. Let's I try one more time, cut around short distance. Yeah, works. <laughs> more torque. Yep. It's not bad. It's very demanding and for now, it doesn't give me any feeling of confidence. So, and as we had last time, it's either you're in fight or in flight mode. When I don't have confidence, I shoot bad because I'm in flight mode and not in fight mode. But the bow overall is beautiful, brilliant, and you don't want to stop shooting. So you really want to learn to work this bow properly. So you need to spend your time. First you spend your money, then you spend your time. Oi, oi, oi. A review in the heat. Beautiful bow, outstanding craftsmanship, and even when you see here, slightly tapered on the side, so the back is a little more narrow than the belly, so all these details really, really nice. So this, as you can, you can see, it, you see that? It's kind of like a 45 degree angle there. Really nice handle is good. Need some time that you get used to it. Nice bow. So, package, a bow, a string, a sleeve. And let's, shall we call it documentation? Okay, we call it the documentation and it's six points. This is what I have, would wished. I don't know, it's, it's a premium product. I would ex have expected a warranty card with all, you know, whatever bit details of the bow, but nothing. But okay, you have to deal with it. Handling, stringing this bow. You need to know what you're doing. Of course, it's a tar tartar bow. When you know what you're doing, this bow is just from the beginning stiff. So it's not like other bows. You, you it's e like this uh, from from daylight. Also easy to string these forty pounds. These forty. Six pounds, not so easy to string. So you need to know what you're doing. Get two people. It's a performance bow, so it's a bit more, you know, like a Formula One. They are, they are not so, mm, you know, you need to be, take a bit care of it. But handling overall, then uh, once you have it strung and then this bow is straight, so there's completely no problem. This bow is so well built. I give it a 10. The build, definitely a 10. This is such a beautiful, well made, everything is crafted stunningly. You have your black layer, I guess it's even a carbon layer in it. So, and then, I said here, tapered limbs that uh, the belly is wider than the back and all these small details. The white phenolic overlays here, they are wide enough that the tip runs nice and round. This big wide string pad, uh, big wide string pads that the string always ends up there. So this bow is made for heavy usage and all transitions, everything is nice. And here when you see the fade out ends here, ends here and then when you see this it's really pretty so can't say anything as this bow is beautiful well made are we talking about oh the basic feel now <sighs> with the lightweight arrows you feel a little so you still have can you hear it can you feel it one two three four five gotten a little worse now but maybe if you change the brace side a little bit, it might go away, but I don't know what the brace side should be. That's why I can't tell. I leave it as it is, and I guess it might still go away or not. There's a little vibration. You feel it a little in the hand, even with 420 grain arrows, which is still more than eight, it's eight and a half or something, almost nine. You feel it a bit, so 
And from horse picking on, I should anyway heavy arrows, I guess. So it don't see me even. So I need to talk here. There, there we are. It's terrible when I talk over there and you don't see me. Mm, but I give it a 10. Draw experience, but draw this bow is really, really nice. So this is like, here it's Ostra, and then nice, 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 nice. So a draw curve, once I have, uh, I can't do it, but a draw curve would be nice if the bow builder would make the fourth draw curve. And I don't have to do it because my how I do it is not right. Draw experience is excellent. Shooting experience, this bow is very demanding. So you really need to know what you're doing. It's for sure not your first bow and you pay 1300 bucks for a bow. Uh, it's nice, but it's sometimes I shoot dreamy groups and next time I miss the target and I don't know why yet. So you need to work on that. So I give it for this a nine is a total of 55 and price value. I mean, for me, it's 1300 plus 100 shipping plus 300. It's 700 dollars for a bow which does with these eight and a half grain arrows, 200 foot per second. I would personally would get a bow from Lukas Navalny and a bow from Chaba Grosa. Then have two nice bows and they perform similar. So it's not now that this one, even if it's built for performance, is easily outperforming the other ones. I was expecting a little more in the speed, but as I said, I don't know how low you can go with the weight, but I think eight or seven should be the limit and we had eight and a half and then 200 foot per second. That was a little underwhelming for me. So I expected this bow to be a bit faster, but it wasn't. And for that, and for the price and $1,700, it's way, so I give it a three because it's, for me, from, I mean, it's a nice bow, don't get me wrong. And if you have the money, get one for sure. This is one of the nicest bows to shoot once you get used to it with this handle, everything brilliant. But for me, it's not worth it. I could get, or I get even three, four bows from Alibow and can have fun and switch my bows and whatever and they perform almost like this. So maybe they're not completely there, but it's not so much difference. So if then most probably, if I would get a bow from Sanduki, I would save up my money, get directly Hornbo. But this hybrid, I think doesn't do justice to what Lucas is capable of building. So it's a nice bow, but it's not outperforming other good laminated bows for the price. Sorry for that, but still, patrons, you can be happy. It's an amazing bow, it's an outstanding, beautiful, pretty, well-made bow, nothing against it. It's just not there when you see price and performance for me. So thank you, Lukas, for building this bow to me. It was an interesting experience to uh, work with Sanuki. And yeah. Thank you all for watching. Patrons, be alert. Soon I will ask you a question about this bow and then this bow will get into, will change the hands and will go somewhere. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one.